fake or authentic. Good day, fellow Jersey nerds. Welcome to episode 10 of Fake or Authentic. I'm your host, Ryan, and this is the podcast where I make up statements, but it's up to our co-host to determine whether or not those statements are fake or authentic, just like the jerseys you see around NHL arenas. On Fake or Authentic this week are Sean and TC. TC, it's been a while since you've done Fake or Authentic. You ready for this? I absolutely am. Sean, you ready to do some fake or authentic here? I am ready to fake and or authenticate. Uh, You know, I'm still here with my really crappy import dragon figures. Leon Dreisaitl, which will be going to Corey (laughs) at some point uh, whenever I get around to mailing it to him or I'm in Ontario. Yeah, so McFarlane, uh, baby, I'm sorry. Please come back. (laughs) I didn't realize how much I needed you, McFarland. The best? Like, this is this is bad. It's a, is that a World Cup of Hockey one, too? I thought Yeah, it, yeah. Okay, yeah, so those are real. Like, the face is just like two dots and a smile, right? Is it, there's no attempt to make uh, it, it look like. It vaguely looks like him, like very vaguely. It looks like, you know what it looks like? It looks like um, you kind of, like, I, he... He's in the drive-thru at, like, Tim Hortons, and the the person on the other side is getting his order completely wrong. He's just kind of sitting in the car, like, like awkwardly, like, yeah, no. Or no, no, no. He's making the face of, like, the uh, like he's in Tim Hortons, and the guy behind him's just rambling about how slow it is. You know, meanwhile, the kitchen's on fucking fire. Is and Tim he's just Hortons? sitting there like, oh, fuck. yeah, you're right. Tim's doesn't cook anything in the house. <laughs> I think they're just, they're they're reheaters. Anyways, we got five fake or authentic statements ready to go. We'll come right back with those. This is the HJC Podcast Network. New shows every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Here we go. Fake or authentic number one, a reverse version of the Calgary Flames 2011 Heritage Classic jersey would be a failure. Sean, fake or authentic? Now, what do you mean by reverse? Just reverse the positioning mean- of the yellow and the red. Oh, yes, that'd be a total failure. It'd have a very Ronald McDonald look to it. Now, if you suggested that you take the canvas color and made that the main color, you could totally make that work uh, very nicely, in fact. If you made where the yellow is maroon and then used yellow for the numbers. Uh, you, you could make something really nice out of that. I think, uh, like you could make a home and road set, but you could not make a yellow version of this. I'm sorry, Calgary. Cause I love this Jersey personally. I think it's one that everybody should make an effort to try and get in their collection, but, uh, it's kind of lightning in a bottle. Yeah. I love this Jersey too. And that's why I was tempted to, to put this statement on fake or authentic to just see if a reverse version would work. Uh, TC fake or authentic, uh, reverse version would be a failure. hundred percent authentic. Just like you, this is one of my favorite outdoor game jerseys, if not my favorite. Uh, and I got to say, Sean hit it nail on the head. It would get way too much of a Ronald McDonald. There was some minor league team a couple of years back that actually did Ronald McDonald jerseys. And it looks exactly like what I would imagine this jersey to look like in reverse. Yeah, I think that was they, Cam, Cam Loops. I think did that, but yeah, I know what you're yeah, talking about. And they painted the ice yellow. Yeah. <laughs> nope, that was uh, Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo, sorry. Yes. Kalamazoo did it. In fact, uh, we should. Oh no, maybe it wasn't. No, it was the Albany River Rats. I think it was Kalamazoo. I think you're right no, on that one. Albany, Albany did it too. I had the yeah. I got it right here. Because I remember uh, uh, seeing a Ronald tweet. McDonald Church. I remember seeing Let's a tweet. It, it was celebrating the 10 year anniversary of one of the K teams, which Kalamazoo is, is correct. But at least the Calgary flames won't look like, look like that. But I do want, like, I would love to see that Jersey come back. Yep. That That's a Jersey. It was, it was the K wings. Okay. Okay. With the Got it. It was the okay. So the K wings did, uh, yeah, the K wings did the piss ice. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, but- the yellow snow kids. <laughs> 
the River Rats did a Ronald McDonald House one, so they just made a yellow version of a Team USA 2005 era jersey, uh, and then wore the Ronald McDonald type stripes. But the the the, the K wings or the wings or whatever you want to call them did uh, just straight up Ronald McDonald suit, but with uh, black gear. Well, they tried at least. Oh, and it looks like the Allen Americans did it too. Except oh. Ronald McDonald gave a pregame speech. <laughs> How can you take we that going, seriously? We are going to link that in the podcast description. <laughs> that was that was the oh, last. No, oh, it's even better. It's even him. better. It is Ronald McDonald quoting her Brooks. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right, you folks will uh, you folks will get the you folks will get a taste of that. That'll be available in the episode description. All right, let's go to fake or authentic number two. I would rather own every jersey that my favorite player has ever worn than own every jersey that my favorite team has ever worn. Sean, fake or authentic? That's totally authentic. And I think the reason why is because most of my favorite players are journeymen. So, Rollison, Yager, Arnott. Like, you're going to get a pretty diverse jersey collection here. Roberts. Uh, McGilney, uh, those type of guys. Uh, even you know, even if you include some of their junior careers, you know, for that, you know, Pavlik, Ehlers, you're going to get like a really solid jersey collection out of this. Uh, yeah, but if all, if all your favorite players are like Martin Brodeur, uh, you know, one team guys, I'm sorry, but you might want to stick with your favorite team. Well, you get like the All Star Game jerseys too. And uh, uh, I he had he had a run with the Blues, <laughs> and well, sure, but I mean that doesn't like to give you an idea. So, say you pick like um, uh, let's use let's use Rob Blake as an example. You get the Burger King, you get all three uh, Glory era Abs jerseys, you get like several different Kings jerseys, you get three of the best Sharks jerseys, Team Canada. Team, you got Team Canada. All-Star. You get you get a like, yep. You got a whole bunch of All Star jerseys. If you pick uh, Patrick Waugh, you get like four. <laughs> All right, uh, TC, fake or authentic on this one? You know what? I I initially was going to go fake because I was thinking it was active players. In which case, my favorite active player is Matt Zuccarello, still a sore subject. But that would essentially leave me with roughly the same jersey collection from the past 10 years. Uh, plus some extra ones if I were the team. But if we're going all time, got to go with Jags. And that gives me some pretty sweet opportunities. I get, personally, I know people are going to hate me for this, but the Columbia blue caps jerseys. I grew up with those jerseys. Those are the capitals to me. I get the Pittsburgh diagonal script, which is the only acceptable one outside of New York. I get Rangers jerseys. Sure. I'm stuck with some crap like the Dallas F U to Reebok and the shitty Calgary flames ones that, they still haven't managed to get rid of, but I'm still getting some pretty quality jerseys in there. What that, if you could only have hypothetical jerseys? Like you could only have a Yager Edmonton Oilers jersey from 2008, 2009, a uh, Richter inaugural, uh, you know, Preds jersey, you know, like that sort of thing. Like you'd only have places that players almost went. Well, that. I think of yeah, that would be that would be funny to us, but no one else. Everyone would look oh, at that and go, "What the hell?" Are you doing? jersey. <laughs> like there was a uh, in '93, and Anaheim and Florida were coming into the league, and just the way it worked out, Glenn Healy, I think it was over a two day span. Glenn Healy started the day on the Islanders, ended up getting drafted by the Ducks. I think it was traded. I want to say to Tampa Bay but then ended up in the end signing as a free agent with the Rangers. So it was just ridiculous. It would be hilarious then to have those four different Glenn Healy jerseys 
or uh, Mike Hoffman. Uh, there was guys at the Sharks game that had that giant banner. Mike Hoffman, June eighteenth. He wants that banner. Yeah, June eighteenth, two thousand eighteen to yeah. June eighteenth, two thousand eighteen. That would be a that- guy. A guy that I think would be really cool would be like those guys that play for like nine different teams over five years at the end of their career. Like, um, I don't know, the guy that comes to mind, Barrasso. <laughs> like br- getting those obscure Peter Bondra. Going from, like, what was it? He went from Ottawa to, I think he was on Boston at one point, uh, to friggin' Atlanta. Oh, right. His stop in Atlanta. Any Thrasher's jersey would be kind of nice to have at this point. Bond for Thrasher's jersey would be, you know what, that's happening. (laughs) But it doesn't matter what Thrasher's jersey I got. I could not top the Danny Heatley Rookie of the Year (laughs) signed jersey. That is untoppable. It's a classic. Yeah, it's... I'm just waiting for my Dan Snyder memorial patch to really. <laughs> uh, boo. To boo! You need your fifth anniversary patch too if you're going to do that. <laughs> That's fair. That was that was a bad logo. All right, fake or authentic number three. Oh, this is a good one. I like this one, and this is all based on preference and definitely does not <laughs> exist in the real world. In a five round fight, so we're talking UFC. In a five round fight inside an octagon. Batman would wipe the floor with Iron Man. Sean, fake or authentic? And he can't have his armor, yeah? Oh, no, no. They're fully suited up. It, it's Batman versus uh, Iron Man. Which Batman, which Batman is it, though? Uh, well, my favorite Batman is... Uh, for, uh, what, what's his nuts? Christian Bale? Is that the name? What's his name? The Dark Knight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. yeah, that's Christian Bale. It's Michael Keaton, so it's going to be Michael Keaton. All right, that's uh, fine. So it's versus Robert Downey Jr. It's tough. Uh, I don't know. Uh, You know what? I'm going to say Batman would win, uh, but it'd be very close. Like, we wouldn't have, like, a full knockout. It'd be be a points win, I think, personally. It would go to the judges? Exactly. Go to the judges, and it'd be a pretty clean fight, honestly. You know, you don't have freaking Captain America and the Winter Soldier for and the judges are just three drunk creatures from the Star Wars cantina, so you never know which way that could go. No, so I'm going with, uh, you know what? I'm going with, uh, yeah, so Batman wins on points and technicality. They shake it off. Uh, and uh, But at the end of the day, the main card event between uh, Thanos and uh, Ant-Man uh, I'm taking Ant Man uh, in the first round. Right up the poop shoot. Right up the <laughs> I would have put like Thanos against King Kong Bundy or Andre the Giant or something like that. All right. He, King Kong Bundy died like yeah. a month ago. I know. I know. No. Well, there we go. There we go. Main card event Thanos and Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> there, I would a, I don't watch know if you saw the like, shit out of that. <laughs> Someone did a mock-up for WrestleMania this year based on the uh, Avengers Endgame poster, and they had Brock Lesnar as Thanos' face in the background, and it I, I didn't even know that they had edited that part of the poster. <laughs> I thought they just left it. <laughs> oh, man. I would, I gotta, I, we'll look that up. That's tremendous. Uh, TC, where are you? Fake or authentic Batman would wipe the floor with Iron Man UFC fight. 100% authentic. Y'all can't see right, right now because you don't have the special live video feed. But sitting on my coffee table, I have two different Batman mugs. I have on my dining room table Joker and Batman salt and pepper shakers. I have a litany of Batman posters around the house because I live alone and there's no woman to tell me to put nicer things around. If there was, uh, you don't need her true <laughs> it's either true. batman or bust uh, oh no 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 because i can one up that i have because my car is a little older it doesn't have a bluetooth receiver in it so i had to buy one and stick it to my car guess what i named it what jarvis <laughs> oh yeah well one of my employees for secret santa this year bought me batman cologne so now i smell <gasps> like the dark Oh my goodness, that would be so good. And then someone could be like, 
Someone could be like, what is that smell? And you could just be like, it's Batman. I have done that to (laughs) other employees. But yeah, but do you have the bat credit card? The bat credit card. Bat credit card. (laughs) Who's that endorsed by? I have Uh, Bank of America, the freedom (laughs) card. I no, Amex is the freedom card, and you and I both know that. (laughs) Bank of America. that's this is sponsored by Amex and Bank of America, by the way. <laughs> is the uh, is the Batman credit card endorsed by Wayne Enterprises? That's not a real thing. Like, uh, no, I don't know. You have to go watch Batman and Robin and watch Arnold Schwarzenegger talk about cool out. <laughs> Probably don't use the but- Batman credit card. That would either have a really high interest rate or not be a real thing. Back to the subject at hand. Oh, yes, of course. We know that Batman has remote EMPs, so he could just throw one of those bad boys on the floor. No, 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 no. Punch him straight in his little bitch fake heart. He's got a glorified pacemaker. He doesn't have the fake heart anymore. He took the fake heart out and put it on a plaque to prove to Pepper Potts he had a heart. He's a fucking nerd. (laughs) No, he isn't. He's a billionaire playboy philanthropist who doesn't play nice in the sandbox. He's a full-on rapist? (laughs) No. (laughs) Oh, my God. I mean, I know they hinted at it in the movies, but good Lord. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) All right. If you can't tell, I am very much, well, not a Marvel fanboy because I don't associate myself with those type of nerds. I only associate with sports (laughs) nerds. Fuck Marvel. It's all DC. <laughs> Fuck DC. Go make a good movie. I f- Sorry, Sam looks pretty good. I feel like Iron Man would want to pull out a lot of tricks, and Batman's just not down but with that can't. shit. He'd be like, I don't have time for this. And he'd probably just submit Iron Man. Like, he'd like grab him, throw him in some sort of choke, and just cut off some sort of. Yeah, well, no. No, no, you're right, though, because Batman's, like, super martial art trained, at least, like, in Dark Knight Rises. Or not, yeah, or, yeah. Dark Knight Rises, he fucking wrestles Bane, for God's sake. And then Batman Begins, you see his training. You don't see any of that with Iron Man. Iron Man's just really crafty and that sort of thing. He's not particularly a great melee fighter. He got the shit kicked out of him in Civil War. He got the shit kicked out of him by Mickey Rourke, you know, so in Iron Man 2. So, I mean, he's very smart. So if this was like a science fair, I think that Iron Man, that Tony Stark would beat Bruce Wayne. But it's not a science fair. It's a regulation-sanctioned MMA fight. And Dana White is counting on Batman to win. So... I just... Batman survived both a Superman attack and a nuclear bomb going off. You can't take him down. (laughs) Can you imagine? I'm now picturing them going to their their corners after the first round, and like Tony Stark has like all his Marvel friends jumping in the octagon, like Tony or Iron Man, are you okay? And he's got like seven different fuck ups, little kind of working on his cuts there. And all Batman has is like Alfred. Batman wouldn't even let Robin into the octagon, and Alfred would just be standing there like, "Do you need a towel, sir?" And Batman would be like, "No, I'm fine, thank you." And then they just oh. go. <laughs> oh, let's well, move. You know, I can see like the UFC sponsored, like you know, all the shots of Iron Man in the suit. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like that. You like take a shot to the face and be like Jarvis. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> Jarvis. Whoa, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> Are we good? Okay. Is oh. he going to play? He's like upside down, and he's gonna get like stone cold stunnered, and it's like, oh fuck. <laughs> that's not a real thing, Sean. Like that's that's wrestling. I I want to see someone try a Stone Cold Stunner in a UFC fight, and just see how that goes. Great way to. Knock down. <laughs> uh, I'd love to. As yeah. Stupid as wrestling looks, like I've tried the mandible claw, and that shit hurts. <laughs> like when someone's pressing down on the nerve below your tongue. <laughs> Like it looks dumb as hell, and you're like, "Oh, you could just bite down," but it like immobilizes your jaw, and you're just like, "Ah, ah no, 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 no. <laughs> it's a nerve." Then, like Chewbacca, shit. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Oh, man. All right. Uh, let's move on with fake or authentic here. We're looking at all-star game logos and fake or authentic. The 94 all-star game logo, this is the one held in New York City with the skyline and the Statue of Liberty. The 94 all-star game logo is the best all-star game logo of the 1990s. Sean, fake or authentic? Oh, this is tough because there was not a single bad logo in the 90s. In fact, you could argue that between 1989 and present, there has only been one objectively bad NHL all-star game logo in 2002, 2003. That's my honest opinion, was that every other one of them has some sort of merit and something to like that at the time made it the best possibly ever. My personal favorites are 2002, 2008, uh, 2018. And sadly for 93, 94, I cannot give it crown for everything in the 90s because, and I'm totally biased on this because I've seen it so damn much, 92, 93, just... I think before I knew what all the NHL All-Star Game logos looked like, just like as a kid, it was the one that I knew more than any other one because I had the original NHL hockey game from EA that was that season. So that logo was in the book that the special edition on the like five different floppy disks came with. So I had that book and I had that logo. Like it was that 2002, 2004. And then the two games after the lockout, those were like impressioned in my mind as a kid. And I could not, and those were like, like if you ask me what all-star game logos look like, I tell you that they look like that. So, you know, 94, great logo, nothing wrong with it, but it just can't beat out 92, 93, the second Montreal game. TC, fake or authentic 94 all-star game logo, best of the 90s. I'm going to go fake as well. I really want to love it because it's, in my team city the year they won the cup but sean is right for the wrong reasons 92 93 is a garbage logo and i will fight you to the death on that the only one worse than that in that decade was the 95 96 boston yeah that one was so 90s that being said i can think of at least three logos that i like more than the 94 I'll throw in the 91, the Chicago. I really like the way they incorporated the colors of the feathers into the points on the star, and it's a nice, simple roundel logo. Uh, I really like what they did with the 92 flyers. They went with the sort of aviator motif. It looked like a lapel pin from uh, an actual like fighter pilot, and I like the way that they incorporated the logo into the star. And then... I really like the San Jose game, 97, where they used the shark fin as the top of the star. Sure, the they got kind of lazy with the arching word mark across the top, but other than that, it's a pretty solid logo. So I'm going to go fake on this one. Well, I made the statement, so I think the 94 logo is best. But, uh... You're so <laughs> stupid. Ryan, what's your favorite of all time? Is that it? Of all time? Well, yeah, I got to look them up now. So I thought cl- close in the 90s was the 94 logo is the best one for me. Yeah. But close in the 90s is the 98 logo from Vancouver. I really I enjoyed that logo. That um, so top. I think the thing that gets me on the 94 is that the fucking font they used. Because everyone in the 90s was using that font to promote their sports teams on memorabilia and stuff. And I just got so yeah. burned out on that font that it's, it's irrevocably made it a terrible font for me. Oh, there's so I'm going to, I like the modern logos like Tampa Bay's recent one was really was good. Cool. Nashville's recent one was really good. Unfortunately, Ottawa's from 2012 was decent. I like uh, I own the patch for Carolinas. That's a really good looking logo. I oh, think that was okay. It's a little too similar to a little too similar to the Montreal, but I like it. Uh, I got to give it to the 2002 LA game. I just it. I don't know what it is about it, but it looks like if you took a logo from like the 40s and then modernized it. Plus, I mean, it is on my favorite All Star jersey of all time, and it's huge on it too. So it's just, 
it's just a really nice logo. Yeah, that one was the 2002 LA one was pretty good. I guess I'd have to give it to Tampa Bay 2018. I think that's my fa- favorite All Star logo. Dallas from 2007 was good too. I enjoyed that one. It's hard to choose. The only. <clears throat> what about Atlanta's original from the lockout year? That was that the uh-huh. All Star Five one. That was friggin' sweet. Same with the unused Phoenix one. Like that, even though it's like very basic and not even a real logo, I still like it. And I still, I, it still does upset me that Phoenix and Arizona were going to have a chance to host an all star game back to Phoenix and Arizona. Phoenix and Atlanta were going to host back to back all star games, and the league took Arizona's game away, yeah, but gave Atlanta theirs. Like it's just like, but then the oh we won't re so 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 Atlanta got the All Star game, but then they relocated them. But the team that didn't get the All Star game, they won't relocate, despite the fact of telling them basically, eh, you don't get to host an All Star game now, dickweed. Another it was the last hurrah. <laughs> Another uh, All Star game logo that wasn't it wasn't very good, but I just remember it because it was kind of the first All Star game that I remember watching as a kid was 91 i think it was or 90 in pittsburgh it wasn't an exceptional logo by any means but it used the uh the old igloo in the logo but i remember watching that entire game it was a like a sunday afternoon or something so just for sentiment sentimental reasons uh i guess i enjoy that logo even though it's not very good let's go to our final faker authentic question this one looking back on the reebok edge era and this one assumes that Buffalo and Ottawa jerseys are the last two remaining pieces from the Reebok Edge era. So fake or authentic, the Buffalo Sabres jerseys will outlast the Ottawa Senators jerseys as the last remaining reminders of the Reebok Edge era. Sean, fake or authentic? Fake because I think the Kings are going to do it longer than any other team. It's a subtle nod to the Edge era. But the fact that they still haven't added a goddamn uh, friggin' hem patch, to, or hem patch, hem stripe to that black jersey. It's been a decade almost. That they, It's almost been a decade. It'll be a decade in two years that the LA Kings whipped out that white jersey and got rid of the original edge set. And they still haven't put a stripe on the hem, on the hem of the black jersey. That is going to last longer than anything else. But of the two teams that you mentioned, I think Buffalo's going to make it last a little longer because, frankly, the way things are going, Ottawa will relocate to Houston at this point because Eugene Melnick felt like it. So, uh, fake? Yeah, fake. Because you said Buffalo saved. Okay, fake. Yeah. yeah, Ottawa's exploding right in front of our faces, so it'll be interesting to see where that goes. TC Faker Authentic Buffalo Sabres jerseys that will outlast the Ottawa Senators jerseys as the last re- remaining reminders of the Reebok Edge era. I'm going to say authentic because, you know, Ottawa has had these fan polls. So they're sort of testing the waters out for a rebrand and they have some sense of self-awareness. Buffalo has proven time and time again that they are completely tone deaf when it comes to uniform and logo design. And they're just going to ride this shit into the ground. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. And how long have people been asking for just give us the throwback and this is the era to just go to the throwback and buffalo's head in the sand just ignorant as fuck and being like no we're the throwing back to the goat head next year you guys <laughs> oh, that'd be great what are you talking about guys buff a slug 2.0 like just think about take the uh carbon fiber pattern from the 2014 outdoor games and put it on like just picture mecca buff a slug I think you need to. I think you need to understand the definition of great, Sean, because that is not it. it. Is, okay, is fine. Mecca Just the buff slug, slug. Like Mecca Streisand. The buff slug comes back. Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. The buff slug comes back in a good jersey. How about that? How about how about the buff slug gets the chance it deserves? Like it had its chance. And all, all the Buffalo, all the Buffalo slug was good for was opening the door back into the realm of blue and gold for the Sabres. 
I think that's the only thing it's going to be. We're going to throw pit stains on them. <laughs> <laughs> the only the, the greatest thing the Buffalo Slug ever did was make people realize how wrong they were about disliking it when Buffalo hung on to those mediocre edge jerseys. <laughs> Oh man! All right. Well, that's I what we wait for them to build a primary set around the turd burger. Oh, oh! I thought we could go one week without ha- mentioning <laughs> the turd never. burgers. No, never. not happening. All no, right, they're, they're, they'll figure it out. They'll instead of having seven shades of gray on the home, they'll have seven shades of blue on the away. It's coming. Be heads up for that, everyone. Uh, that is everything that we have. So on hockeyjerseyconcepts dot com right now is the San Jose Sharks redesign, and entries for that are due April 5th. We also have the Quebec Nordiques redesign top three vote, and that vote ends on March 29th. I'd like to thank our co-hosts for being on this week, Sean and TC. To stay up to date with all of our podcasts, subscribe to the HJC Podcast Network. You'll get notifications when Throwback Throwdown comes out every Saturday and when the Jersey Nerds podcast comes out every Tuesday. Thank you to all you Jersey nerds for listening. Goodbye, everybody.